um, any member in good standing can announce their candidacy either um, at the uh, start of our competition meeting on the 21st of this month, or they can send an email to Alan indicating their interest in candidacy. And then on at the beginning of our competition meeting, we'll take a brief time just to announce the slate of those candidates. Um, and you'll also receive an email that tells you the slate of candidates. And this is all being done because this is how our, um, our uh, club is set up in our bylaws. Um, on November the 4th program meeting, we will have a program, but we will also have an election um, from those uh, slate of candidates. So um, that's just to reiterate that it's clearly spelled out in the uh, galleon as well. Um, we have a competition this month. Intentional blur is the theme. The date is um, October 21st and Nick Stover S-C-O-V-E-R is our judge, and uh, the Galleon has his website. Um, it's uh, He has a very good website and some wonderful photography to, uh, to view um, if you uh, are interested or have a chance. Um, just want to uh, say also other things that, that are in the Galleon. Our photo books for this year are due on the 3rd of December. Um, so we, we have a little bit of time, um, and then they will be, um, we'll have those uh, judges presented in January. In December, we have a program in the first Wednesday, but we will not have a competition or holiday gathering. Um, we have something special for that program, but it's to be determined. Um, Penny, would you like to fill us in on uh, field trips? Uh, again, like you said, Cheryl, in the galleon are more details. Um, this month, we're going deadlines? to follow follow up on photos, um, just <laughs> doing them at home with Tony's uh, presentation tonight. That maybe we have some enlightenment that will fall upon us, and we'll uh, have some some projects that you'd want to work on and then share that at the next um, meeting, the program meeting after the election, probably then. Um, let's see. And to follow up on our mindful uh, photography practice that we did, you can do, uh, again, a, another self field trip with mindless uh, photography. And that's just... Uh, kind of emptying your mind and, and then uh, taking your camera and just <clears throat> shoot photos without any thought to it at all. So however you would like- I probably to do it all the time. Well, I, that's what that's I was great. gonna say. <laughs> I already do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we have our, our field trips coming up that are uh, travel field trips for those that are interested. Um, we're getting to where we have to do some reservations the 15th and the 16th of this month for those that are interested in the Zion and Bryce Canyon trip, the um, first part of November, um, we have to get our shuttle tickets uh, lined up um, on the 15th, I think it is. And then the 16th for those interested in the Horsetail Falls and winter uh, Yosemite trip, in February, um, if you're camping out, uh, campsite reservations are need to be be made on time to make sure that you get your reservation. Um, and then December is uh, just kind of <clears throat> hang at home. Uh, no, nothing planned um, that I have so far anyway for December. I think that wraps it up. There, there are opportunities for Christmas display lights as well as the Morro Bay uh, sailing boat light show. Are they going to do that? I assume they will. I mean, they're safe, socially distanced out on the bay. <laughs> so. Sure, but it's the, the crowd. 
on the edge. You can still space out. I, I've been there before and been up on the hill above everybody, and there wasn't anybody within 30 feet of me. So it's an option. Okay. You can always space out. Yeah. <laughs> um, Far out. So, so Greg, on the, on the Morro Bay one, is that something we can look up online to see when it is, or is that throughout December, uh, the, the, the Morro Bay Chamber of Commerce will have that listed. Okay. It, it, they hold it every year. Um, I've been there a couple times. I can't imagine they'd cancel it. But, you know, they are right. If you're right down on the bay, on, on the wharf, it can get crowded. But there's plenty of space there to space out. Yeah, it depends on if they they want to take things in their own hand to make sure that there's no transmission. We yeah. Need to to shut it down. So I haven't heard anything. Of course, it's early. Um, I'll keep my eye out for that. Thanks, Greg. Does uh, Arroyo Grande still do anything for Christmas? I don't think anybody's doing anything that's a group, you know, or just a one time event anyway. The, there might be the, the lights to go see and such as that, but I don't think it's a typical Christmas at all. Right. Yeah. So are we going to get together for our potluck and just um, eat at our own dinner tables and <laughs> chat, <laughs> chat over WebEx? Yeah. Why not? I think, I, I think we should have a show and tell of, of holiday photos, photo show and tell. And so that's what I, and then I don't, I wanted to have some kind of. You were going to say something earlier, Alan. Or was that it? Uh, well, actually, I was going to say something that's completely. Un well, I can just say this. Uh, we had a, uh, a good Saturday chat the other day and. And I uh, bit the bullet, and I I set a camera in to be turned into a an infrared camera. Woohoo! Woo yeah. Well, but that was that was a quick decision, Ellen. It's taken us months of debating what to do. <laughs> it's taken me. It's taken me over three years. Bob Mihalik uh, had about two years ago, and uh, so anyway. Uh, in fact, maybe what I could do for a pro maybe I get Peggy Jansen of the San Luis Club and the Photo Society to do one of her programs on color infrared. She does, especially in Hawaii, and she has a really that good program. That would be interesting. And, uh, yeah, she's she's a she's a really nice photographer too. So I'll see what I can do. But uh, I was really inspired by our presentation. Well, we we made a decision. Um, after that Saturday chat as well. And um, we decided to look more into the point and shoot cameras, Tony. And uh, Ron. Excellent results with it. Ron ordered a used uh, point and shoot camera, and we're going to have that converted instead of the A7R2, which will leave us the A7R2 to trade in for something, you know, get a credit for something else. Yeah. And so. That was a, yeah, it was for, the Saturday chats are a good stimulating conversations. Yes, it, was, it was a good, it was a good chat, wasn't it? Yes. How is it going to be before you get your camera, Alan? Pardon? Um, how long will it be before you get that camera? <clears throat> okay, well, first of all, I went with Kalari Vision instead of Life Pixel. Because a Lumix LX10, which is a one inch sensor camera, they did not list it as one of the cameras they did at LifePixel, who I would have chosen because they're in the West. So, Kalari Vision, I get a box, it's on October 9th, and then it's a two week, uh, one to two weeks till I get it back. So, I'll have it in the next couple of weeks. And so it'll be a point and shoot Sonic. I like it because it's a really easy camera to manually focus. And for a lot of 
Uh, a lot of point and shoots are they're hard to make. focus. This one's particularly easy, and it shoots raw. And the JPEG files are really cool, so I want to really see what I can I can do. And it also shoots 4K video, so I'll see what that turns into. 4K video in so, uh, infrared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> infrared video. That'll be interesting. I'm trying to figure out how to do uh, uh, color channel swapping and in infrared in video. I, I think it can be done, but I'll find out. Mm, that I don't know. I, you might be able to do it, yeah. You I'm might sure. Be able to do it in um, Lightroom and um, Final Cut. Well, yeah, if you got Final Cut. I do. It's hard to do with Final Cut if you don't have Final Cut. So. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> You know, I don't want to spend three hundred dollars or whatever. It's a final cut, and I can use the other one free. Well, as long as we're talking about meetings, I thought that uh, uh, in uh, in November, and I completely cannot remember who that was, and <laughs> or if I just synthesized the whole thing. And then for December, for a meeting, I I think we should have a Christmas party or a Hanukkah party or a Kwanzaa party. Uh, I think we should do. Uh, we should do a show and tell of holiday images. And if someone would like to do like a 10 or 15 minute program, or if two people wanted to do five minute programs, we would just be a potpourri and we can eat dinner. We want to do, but we'll just have a party in December. And then we're going to have to work out what we want to do for January. So is that going to be for the program meeting? That'll be, yeah, I guess. Oh, the virtual potluck. How's that for December? But it, but I was going to bring device? in this guy next week. Sorry. Uh, yeah, December okay. Uh, I was going to bring in Nick Stover, but for your mark and have him uh, do a presentation about the seminars he offers. I don't think that would be a, a real good thing to do for Christmas. I think Christmas should be us because we're like a you know, now is who normally gets on. There are a few other people that get, uh, but it's our core group, and we want to we want to keep our core like strong and functioning, and so we can celebrate that because we've all made it through this year together. So it's made the year a lot better, actually. Yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have Christmas images from last year. I can share some of those. I have some from the light parade in Morro Bay, and our meetup group did a little um, walk around past Robles lights, and I did uh, some there. So, I've got some Christmas photos from '73 that I could share. Well, those would be fun because it would. That would be. That would be interesting. It's a pussycat. That's Ansel. <laughs> I also have some uh, local yeah, lights, uh, Morro Bay yeah. to sailboat lights, and also yeah. from the Cambria yeah. Christmas thing they do up there, the Christmas market. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I have I have those that I could share in December. That would be I, I thought your your beard got away, Ed. <laughs> 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 Maybe we could sing Christmas carols too. Oh. <laughs> this would be nice. there'll, be, there'll be no war. Maybe we could play some, download some real music. <laughs> sing them in the As the host, I'll mute everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and anything else, or shall we start? Well, can I? I'd like to show something if I could. Um, we got a couple articles printed and a couple of papers. And if I should, if we could scare <laughs> my screen, I'd like to show you who we are. Would that be okay? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Can I just push this button? Share screen. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? There we go. There you go. Okay. So too bad that Dave oh. Clark is not here. <laughs> but he, he has seen the article. One of his friends saw it first, and um, this ran in the Santa Maria Times on October third. Um, Lil got a big kick out of it, so that was a lot of fun. And then this, 
This one is from <laughs> News Talk, ran uh, September 18th. And uh, it's a real dark picture, but it was a night when we're out there shooting. I can see Alan okay. over here, and I think this might be Ed. Ed. Uh, that's my husband over there. I'm not sure who that is or who's hiding over there. But anyway, and then one of my pictures that I took with ran in it, and they ran a pretty good story. Um, so I, I'm real happy with those. And that, those are the only two that I've seen. If anybody else has seen anything, then uh, please let me know. And we can, uh, you know, put them in the history book or something. Oh, that's oh. cool. Mm. Okay, I'm not sure how to get. Hey, Jim. You got it. <coughs> um, I was wondering when the next board meeting is. Is there one this month? Is there one? Hold on. Next board is the 1st of December. It's a Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Oh, okay. All right. Are, are we going to have a chance to talk about our competitions for 2021 then? Yes. Okay. Because I actually thought we should have more uh, entries. Well, you've got to persuade people to enter, though, haven't you? <laughs> if you read the galleon, I told everybody that we go to three submissions in January. Right. And I encouraged them. I tried my best to say, hey, it's working great. Please join. <laughs> yeah, I thought we should have a category, a special category every month uh, also. To maybe submit one for that and then two for open something along those lines to have a, a special category in addition to our um our open category that sounds conversation we had that discussion penny and the um, the, yeah, I missed the it, thought I was that the judging or the end of year judging was would be a problem doing it that and instead, we're going to continue to have um, the, some months are theme months. So we already know what we're we uh, have to do a reflections carried over from this year, and then we'll uh, ha have some decision on two other themes. But we, uh, in our discussion, we just couldn't figure out a way that we would um, be able to do the year end judging and have that work out. Yeah, I, I can see that. That's fine. Yeah, we had a, a big discussion about <laughs> dividing categories. I mean, it was quite a discussion. We we finally just decided just to kind of leave things the way they were, and that's easier. And yeah, just increase it to three images at least. <laughs> yeah, I think three sounds great. Jeannie's a ghost. She keeps on coming and going. <laughs> <laughs> She's preparing for Halloween. I'm eerie. <laughs> okay, anything else before we start in with her? And when we're when we're Tony is uh, done with his, we have some show to tell. Sure. Hey. Okay. Oh, why not? Carry on. Order. Mute. Mute. Yeah, mute yeah. everybody. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Yes. Um, my uh, presentation on historical photographs or historical photographic practices, um, I've got a little introduction that um, I was going to read that basically goes, I've been interested in photography since I was about 10 years old. My first real camera I bought was a Pentax S1A, which I saved my allowance to purchase. I've always been in the into the darkroom, shall we say, um, analog side of photography. My father helped me make a temporary darkroom in our only bathroom. We will put a board on the bath and I will set up a cheap old enlarger and make prints. 
when the first digital cameras arrived, they were incredibly expensive. And I remember thinking at the time they would never match the quality of film. In modern times, it could be argued that they've surpassed film photography in quality. However, there is a revival of film shooting enthusiasts. I became interested in alternative processes, first when I went on an evening class in the UK and the history of photography was covered. I learned about how pioneers developed methods to make images. Photography as we know it today began in the late 1830s in France. Joseph Nice Four Niepce used a portable camera obscura to expose a pewter plate coated with bitumen to light. This is the re first recorded image that did not fade quickly. Neep's success led to a number of other experiments and photography processed and photography processed very rapidly. Daguerreotypes, emulsion plates and wet plates were developed almost simultaneously in the mid to late 1800s. I had never attempted to do any of this kind of printing, but when I started doing some classes at Hancock College and David Passage ran a class called Materials and Processes, and I started dabbling in pinhole cameras and historic methods of producing a print. The presentation I give tonight is a culmination of some of my experiments into alternative processes. So. I made this um, keynote because it meant I could organize my photos and things to make life easier uh, for myself. So let's start the journey. Um, cyanotype in England in 1842, three years after the official invention of photography, Sir John Herschel coined the word cyanotype, cyan from the Greek for blue and type meaning print for a process he invented in order to make copies of, ast of his astronomical calculations. His friend Anna Atkins learned the process from him and in 1843 produced a volume of photographs of British algae that is now recognized as the first photographic book. Cyanotype process is based on the fact that upon exposure to sunlight or other UV light, ferric ammonium citrate, a light sensitive iron salt, is reduced to the ferrous state and turns blue in the presence of another iron salt, potassium ferrous cyanide. The chemistry to make the cyanotypes is basically just two chemicals. Part A, the first part of the cyanotype solution is ferric ammonium citrate. This iron salt is not especially toxic and it was in fact prescribed long ago as a dietary iron supplement. The kind that we use is a bright green, almost chartreuse powder that should come in a light proof brown jar or be stored in darkness. Part B, the second part of the solution is potassium ferrous cyanide, which turns blue where it is contact with ferrous ammonium citrate. Since potassium ferrous cyanide, not to be co confused with potassium ferrocyanide, is a commonly used bleach for black and white films and prints, it can be bought at well-stocked photography stores or ordered via the internet or by phone. This chemical is caustic and potentially more toxic than the ferric ammonium citrate. It should not be combined with acid because cyanide gas could be released. However, the easiest method to start making cyanotypes is to buy a ready-made kit which contains ready-to-use liquids of part A and part B. And these are mixed in equal amounts and are ready to coat your paper. With the cyanotypes, after washing for five minutes in water until the greenish unexposed coating has washed off a short dip in a solution of water with a dash of hydrogen peroxide intensifies the blue colour. This step is not necessary as over several days the iron salts will oxidise making the intense blue but the peroxide bath speeds this up making it instantaneous. On the right of this slide, you can see uh, uh, an example of a cyanotype. Um, uh, I, this is a, a, a photo I took with a digital camera in um, Ireland of this ruined house. 
and I thought it made a good subject for a cyanotype with the blue sky uh, and things like that. But, um, you know, it's just an example. There's a few examples here of, of how cyanotype can look. This is the Cambria Cemetery, uh, where I, which is a very interesting place. It's got the, the strangest memorials to people, to dead people. Uh, and this one I found one of the strangest of all. <laughs> but, uh, these two, um, you can see there's, there's a few problems here. The one on the left, the fishing boats in Padstow, as a kind of blotchy texture and this is my fault because when i coated the paper i didn't get the coating even enough so if you leave any puddling you get dark spots as as shown there this is uh, in padstow in uh, cornwall england the one on the right in preston castle um up in um oh god where's it called um i own up there um the problem with this one is i tried a different kind of watercolor paper these prints are typically done on a watercolor paper and what paper you use can really affect the outcome and with this particular paper you get these if you really looked at it close almost like pin spots pinhole spots but um it looks all right at this size World Cyanotype Day was uh, on the 26th of September, and uh, I decided to submit. Now, anyone can submit a cyanotype. You can only submit one. Um, and the theme for this year was interconnected. And I immediately thought of this umbilical cords between the carriages of trains that carry the electricity, the braking, all kinds of things and uh so i i entered this in and it's on their website for the um for the for this year for this year uh i entitled it amtrak umbilical in order to make these require a negative that's the same size as the final print and in the days of old when you had an 8 by 10 camera that wasn't a problem but these days with digital or even if you've got a small negative you need to um make a, a print of it a negative of it on an inkjet printer you can buy this film material called Pictore picturico film um, which is kind of like overhead projector film but it has a coating that allows it to take the ink um you know when you set this up and you get everything right and print it out you have to reverse it because it has to go ink side down to the paper that you've coated and then it goes in a frame or under between two pieces of glass as an exposed to sunlight or ultraviolet light source so um anyway there's more on that coming here's a, a movie about making digital negatives today i'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make a digital negative using just light gray now here's my image uh the color image has been edited now the first thing i want to do is i want to invert the image remember we're going to be printing on the front side of our picture eco which is going to be the emulsion side and that's going to turn over and go emulsion down when we print so we need to flip it around. So we're going to go up here to photo. We're going to go down to flip horizontal and click back. Okay, so we're done there. Now we're going to go over to the develop module and we need to grayscale the image. Okay, so I'm just going to use a grayscale. You can do the grayscale conversion any way you want. I'm just going to use a simple Lightroom preset for landscapes. Okay, so there I've got my image grayscaled. Now I have to invert the tones on that. If I was in Photoshop, it was the easy. We could just hit uh, uh, Command I and we could invert the image that way. But we're going to have to go to our um, tone curve and invert the, uh, the, the curve. Now, as you can 
can see over here, it's a straight line section. So the inversion is going to be a straight line inversion too. Okay. So I'm going to click on the shadows, drag that up. So there's no shadows. I'm going to click on the highlight slider and pull that down. Okay. So you see now we've got a straight inversion, straight line inversion. But when I look here, the shadows look really, really hollow. And they're going to print really, really black. So what I want to do is go back to the positive and add some more density to the shadows. So I'm going to come up here to the um, edit, and I'm going to undo the point curve. That's the first move we made, and I'm going to undo it again, and that's the second move we made. So now I'm going to go to the basic, and I'm going to boost the shadows way up to 100. And I'm going to boost the blacks way up to 102. Okay, so that positive looks kind of, it would look flat. But when we do our inversion, that's going to be, look pretty good. So I'm going to go down to our tone curve again. And I'm going to do that same function. I'm going to drag shadows up to the highlights, highlights down to the shadows. And now I can see we have a lot more tone in our uh, shadows. Okay, so that should print. Pretty good. What I would do over here too is I would for that uh, shadow highlight inversion, I would make a preset over here. And I've done that already under user presets and I've called it negative. So next time I can just hit that and I won't have to fiddle around it. So now I'm going to go to the print module. Okay. And so I've already set up the six by nine horizontal. And for the print settings, uh, I'm going to, uh, I've created a negative print setting and then I'll show you what in. Um, Displays a medium. I just used the default setting in my printer for glossy paper. And down here, I've clicked the black and white photo print, uh, which means the printer is only going to use the black, the um, gray, and the light gray ink. They okay, save that. And then I would go ahead and print. All right. Now there's a video on how to make the uh, cyanotypes themselves. Good morning, photo peeps. Uh, today we're going to look at cyanotypes. A couple of you have uh, told me you were interested in that. Uh, cyanotypes are also kind of a great way to start non-silver processes, or if you haven't done them for a while, to get back in and bring your uh, photo chops back up. Uh, these are some cyanotypes I did yesterday. These are from Bodhi. I haven't forgotten our Bodhi trip, too. I think that would be a good trip for the future when things calm down a little bit. Now, not everything looks great as a blueprint. Uh, portraits don't, blue people usually don't look good. Uh, Nightscape, these are some shots from uh, Saguaro National Monument. Nightscapes look good as blueprints, I think. Uh, seascapes look good. Uh, so there's, you have to think about your subject when you're doing uh, blueprints. Um, the paper I'm going to be using is this Canson Bristol XL. It's, they come in pads, it's recycled paper, it's 100% rag, it's, uh, uh, and it's a really nice paper to use. Uh, I like it a lot. I use it for a lot of things. It works well for Van Dykes, for salt prints. Uh, I haven't tried gum prints on it, but I'm sure it would work good. Now, there's two sizes. Uh, there's uh, two sides to the paper. Uh, one is a little bit smoother than the other. I like the, the uh, front-facing side. So I'm going to put an X in the back side, and I'm going to do four prints. So I'm going to pull out four pieces of paper. Uh, Dick Blick carries this paper and it comes in a lot of different sizes. So I'm going to do quote, four sheets. Okay. And we're going to be doing a digital negative with this. Uh, here's a digital negative. Okay. I'm going to do a separate video on digital negatives. You might want to let me know in the notes uh, how many of you have Lightroom? Because uh, the first one we're going to do is just a really simple inversion of Lightroom to make a digital label. This is uh, Picturica. Okay. 
Now, I like to block out, you don't have to do this, but I like to block out on paper where I'm going to be doing my coding. So I have made a couple different uh, uh, little uh, uh, cardboards that I can use to block out. And basically, you're going to be doing either four thirds or a two by three image. Four thirds are for uh, some uh, cameras take four thirds, some older cameras. Uh, your iPhone takes four thirds. So uh, I like to mark out uh, where I'm going to put the emulsion. So six by nine is what, and six by nine uh, is a normal APS full frame camera uh, size. Uh, if you want to go a little bigger, you can go seven by ten and a half, and that will still fit on an uh, eight and a half by eleven sheet of Pico Rico. So I'm going to do six by nines. So I'm going to measure six by nine should leave you a two and a half inch order all the way around. So I check the sides and the bottom. You don't have to be superbly accurate with this. And then I'm just going to mark a pencil line all the way around. You don't have to push too hard. You just want to know where the emulsion is going to go. And I'm going to do that on all four sheets. Just two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. And I'm going to do this on the next two sheets. And then I will see you in the dark room when we start to coat. All right, uh, we're in my dark room. We're going to uh, mix some cyanotype solution and coat it. Um, you can get the solution at different places. Bostic and Sullivan is nice because you can order it already mixed and you don't have to dig up bottles. You can also buy uh, kits from Photographer's Formulary, uh, which you add water to them. You can also buy the raw chemistry at Bostock and Sullivan. Uh, that's the best way because it's cheap. This is ferric ammonium citrate. This is the light sensitive part. It's it's kind of a baby shade green color of the powder. It's a little tough to mix. It doesn't mix real well. Uh, and then the color, the Prussian blue, comes from potassium ferrocyanide. And a pound of that will last you forever. Okay? Uh, once you get the solutions mixed, and I'll put uh, uh, the gram ratios down below, uh, you mix them equal parts to make a light sensitive solution. So I'm going to do a total of 20 milliliters. So uh, um, 50 millimeter graduate is a good thing to have. You could just use tablespoons to that would work okay. Uh, for the brushes, I really like Japanese hockey brushes. They're all sewn brushes. Uh, as you can tell from the color that this is my cyanotype brush, it's a good idea not to mix the brushes uh, for uh, non-silver processes. You can buy hockey brushes through Dick Blick, and you can see the Van Dyke one. Uh, I like that they take on the color of the process. So I'm going to mix a total of 20 uh, milliliters, and I'll do my four, I'll learn my 14 spot. Um, solution A is your ferricomonium citrate, and if that sits for a long time, it sometimes grows uh, algae on it. Uh, I just use coffee filters to filter out the algae. Uh, if you brush it on the paper, it's, it really won't affect the image, but it looks nasty. So I'm going to do uh, 10 milliliters right here of solution A. And then I'm going to do 10 of solution B. Make sure you get the right caps back on. So that's going to give me. Oh, I didn't move too much. Of it. This is bad. You could end up making a lot. So I'm going to end up with 30. Okay, there's my solution. And I'm going to pour the bowl. Okay, move these. 
Now, the main thing with coding is you want to get as evenly as possible, and you don't want the solution to puddle, because if it puddles, it's going to dry the big blob, and you'll get, um, it'll start to expose by itself. Okay, so you don't want to do that. So what I do is I try to get most of the solution off from my brush. Some people wet their brushes first so it doesn't take as much chemistry. You can do that if you want. Okay, so I'm going to rub it off. And then I'm going to start by outlining the square. Okay, uh, you want to go past your line about a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to fill in the square going horizontal and going vertical, okay, until most of the chemistry gets in the paper. You don't need a lot of chemistry. Okay, and I'm going to set it over, see there? Now, the blueprint is not fairly, is particularly sensitive to light. It's going to outside and take a five or ten minute exposure. So you don't need to use, so I'm going to lay this on a screen across the way here to dry. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other ones. So again, get most of the chemistry out. And then I corral it in. And then go across horizontal and vertical. And I don't like, a lot of people like really flary brush marks. I'm not crazy about that, so I try to make it as smooth as I can. Some people also coat their non-silver with a glass tube. I do that with uh, palladium because it's really expensive, but with Van Dyke, Stinotype, gum, I like a brush. Now, I'm going to let these air dry on the screen. But you can also force dry them with a hair dryer if you want. Uh, it's better to have the hair dryer alone. Alone, excuse me. Okay, this is the last one. Now I read that once it's mixed, it'll go bad in a day or two, but I found that not to be true, and then once it's mixed, I'll put that solution in a separate bottle. And that'll last for a very long time. You can usually tell when it's exhausted, when it stops being that yellow-green color and turns blue. But then that's a pretty good indication that it's um, the solution is exhausted, and then you should just throw it out. Okay. Uh, that means you can throw it down the sink, but run lots of water after. Okay, uh, we're going to let those dry, and then we're going to print and process one. Okay, our cyanotype paper is dry, so we're ready to print it. And you can see there's no uh, blotches or pockets. That means it's got an even coat. We won't get uh, funny densities in our final print. Okay, so I like to tape the negative down to the piece of paper, although pressure would probably hold it. Uh, this is our picture ink now. And if you remember, the ink side goes down on the picture ink. And I like to use frog tape. Uh, it's a painter's tape. It's an art tape. Uh, it doesn't pull up the paper, but you can use any painter's tape that you can get at uh, the hardware store. That'll work. Masking tape will work. Now I want to line that up to my outline. Okay, I'm going to tape it in opposite corners. And then I'm going to put my contact time on the back too. So it's going to be 18 minutes. Now you can print outside, but I don't like to print outside because it's uh, the times on the coast are not consistent because it might be foggy in the morning, they bright sunlight in the afternoon. Okay, you will need a contact frame. Uh, this is my contact frame. This frame was the first frame I ever bought. It's 35 years old and it's still going strong. Uh, 
BMH has contact frames and Freestyle carries contact frames. So um, you could also use just two pieces of glass and clamp them together with clamps. That would work too. Okay, so I put that face down in my frame. Tighten the back. Okay, now I'm going to be printing with a UV light box. And uh, they're a little expensive. Uh, if you buy one already made, I bought mine at Tree Style. Um, you don't need a Tree Style. Uh, there's instructions online on how to make it. Basically, it's a series of UV bulbs, and I'm going to turn it on so you can see. And uh, um, there's about eight tubes in there. They're really close to the paper. And UV light is the light that exposes all our photo processes. Okay, so I've got the timer set for 18. That's going to go in. Make sure you put it emulsion up. And we're going to hit our timer. Now, I've tested this uh, cytotype with these negatives before, and I have 18 seconds. Or, excuse me, 18 minutes is a good time. All right, uh, our slant type is exposed. I want to show you my sink setup. Now, you can do this in your kitchen, you can do it in your bathroom. Uh, I have photo trays. Uh, if you don't have photo trays, you can just use Pyrex uh, baking dishes, anything that will hold water. So, I've got a develop and wash tray over here. I've got one in water through it. You could uh, do it by just adding water occasionally and not have uh, dirty water. The other thing I'm going to make is a toner bath. Okay. Um, the cyan type is going to get a beautiful ultramarine color, but it doesn't have that right away. Uh, it's got to fully oxidize first, and it'll get that in two or three days. But we can speed that up by just putting it in a solution of hydrogen peroxide. This is just hydrogen peroxide from Rite Aid. I'm going to use an ounce of peroxide to a quart of water. And this will give us a really beautiful cobalt blue. Okay. So, now, if you were exposing outside, you can tell when your um, is exposed because it will go from that green color to a blue color and then it'll go this kind of mauvey gray color. And when it gets that color overall, you know your image is exposed. So we're going to take it out of the frame. Now we're going to go into the developer of the wash tray, emulsion up, slide it in quickly, and then it's going to go emulsion down. Okay. Usually when that's in there, I would uh, set up the next negative and get it in the printer. But I'm, I'm not going to do that today for the demo. And you can see we're already trying to turn a beautiful blue color. And we basically want to develop it until uh, the yellow grain is out of the shadows, or the highlights, excuse me. And your wash water is going to turn kind of a greenish color, but you could, if you don't have a tray sample like this, you can just talk about refilling with fresh water. Clean. So now we're going to go into the peroxide and you'll see it, it'll darken down and get a beautiful cobalt blue pretty quickly. You're going to put it in the solution for about a minute. It went really fast. You can see that. It's just a beautiful blue color. And it also picks up contrast. I'm going to set my camera so we can do it. We want to put it in that peroxide. 
15, uh, for uh, 45 seconds to a minute. Everybody bored yet? Now, moving on, um, the other process that I particularly like doing is salt printing. Um, this was invented by William Henry Fox Talbot, who was the uh, first person to come up with the idea of a, a reprintable negative, really. Um, his process is is to use a uh, salt coated paper and then paint silver nitrate on it and uh, the silver nitrate um, turns into uh, um, uh, oh silver chloride silver chloride once it's uh, once it meets a salt so when it's dry it becomes light sensitive uh, the rest is the same in that you put a negative on it and um, and so on like that. So um, I'll move on to some of the prints that I've done. Um, this is a cemetery gate, uh, the Naval Cemetery on Mare Island. Uh, the original picture I took was one of my infrareds with that little camera. Uh, this is... Um, I call it the coffin shop, but it's basically the undertakers in Bodie. Um, different kind of paper. You can see the texture difference. Uh, it's, uh, I still like it. It's good. These are just straight salt prints. They're not toned at all. This, once again, is a schoolhouse in Bodie. Uh, once again, just a straight salt print. I, I personally very much like the brown color. That it, that it, comes up with this. Um, this one is uh, obviously La Purissima Mission, and this is a salt print, but it's toned with gold chloride. And when you tone it with gold chloride, it takes on this, this kind of, what would you call it, pewter kind of color, like a, a nice gray sort of color. Uh, and move on to the next one. And once again, this was taken with a digital uh, infrared camera. Um, and once again, this is gold tone. This is a gate at Los Alam in Los Alamos. So let's go into this one. Isn't as long. So uh, a couple of you have. Uh wanted me to do a video on salt printing. Um, we did some here in my lab way back when, before COVID, but I'm going to do a couple videos on uh, salt printing. Uh, salt printing was invented by Henry Fox Talbot, uh, our group's namesake, and salt printing was one of the first non-silver processes that I did long, long ago. One of the things I like about salt printing is if you tone it with uh, 
full chloride, it gives you the look of platinum at a much cheaper price. Uh, two years ago, I started platinum printing, and the kit then was $185 uh, from Boston and Sullivan. I just looked today, and it was $280. Okay, so that's a big difference. So here's an example of a salt print toned in gold chloride. And here's an example of a, a platinum print. And you can see they have kind of a similar tonality. This is an untoned uh, salt print. And you can see it's got a much more traditional brown color than we're used to in non-silver processes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to salt. Now, the salt is not light sensitive, so we can coat it in light. Uh, I like to keep a separate brush for salting and silvering in this process, and you can easily tell the difference. Uh, Bostic and Sullivan sells the salt solution already made. You can make your own salt solution, though, and I'll show you the chemicals in just a second. Uh, chemically, you should be able to combine equal parts of a salt and equal parts of uh, so the chloride and come up with a light sensitive emulsion. Fox Talbot found through his experiments that you needed an excess of silver to make uh, the paper photographically usable. So we use a 2% salaltic solution and we use a 12% uh, silver nitrate solution. So we're going to be using uh, ammonium chloride, there's a million different salts that you can use. You can use just regular table salt if you want, but we're going to be using sodium chloride. And this you can buy in bottles. And the other thing you'll need is sodium citrate. Okay, those are the two chemicals you need to make the salting solution. So for uh, ammonium chloride, you use 1.5% of ammonium chloride and uh, half a percent of sodium citrate. So to make 100 milliliters, you'd use 1.5 grams of ammonium chloride, and you'd use a half a gram of sodium citrate. Okay, and that's what this mixture is here. And if you buy a salt printing kit from Boston and Sullivan, it'll come with that mixed already. I just have the chemicals, so I mix my own. And they also sell a 12% solution of silver nitrate, which is very useful. Okay, so salting is very straight ahead. You don't need uh, any safe lights or anything. Again, uh, with all the processes, I've marked out with a line uh, where I want the emulsion to be. And I'm just going to use my salting brush, and I just want to make sure that I get an even coating. Uh, it's a little hard to see because it's clear, but you can do this in uh, normal room lighting, so it's pretty easy to see if you get a complete coating on here. Okay, I'm just going to do two pieces. Okay, and I can look in the light and you can maybe see the glare, so I've got it covered. And that goes on my drawing rack. And I'm going to do one more. And these are hockey brushes I'm using. They don't have any metal in them. Okay, that looks good. So that's going to go on my drawing rack. All right. Uh, when that dries, we'll set. All right. Uh, the print is dried. You might notice that we're under safe light. Um, I've read that you can coat uh, the silver nitrate under subdued light. I have a safe light, so I figure I might as well use that. Also, when I first started doing salt prints a million years ago, uh, I would coat in a guest bathroom that had no windows, and you can use a yellow bug light too. So um, I'm using Bostic and Sullivan's silver nitrate. This is a 12% solution. I've also put a little blue food coloring in it. Uh, so that's your quiz question class. Uh, why would I use blue food coloring in it to help me see uh, 
throughout the movie. Um, silver nitrate is terrible. You don't want to get it in your eyes. So if you don't wear glasses, it's probably a good idea to wear uh, sunglasses or to wear goggles. You can also use, uh, if you don't want to stain your fingers, if you're sloppy, you can use uh, a glove. I'm fine with that. Now, I'm using a hockey brush. I've also rinsed this hockey brush out with distilled water so that I'm not wetting the brush down with 12% silver nitrate. Okay, so I'm going to take a little, and again, I'm going to kind of do the outside edges. And then I'm going to go back and forth on the inside, vertical and horizontal, with my silver nitrate. And you don't have to put a ton on. Okay, so what's happening now is the silver nitrate, remember, silver nitrate is not very sensitive to light, but it's combining in situ with the salt that's already on the paper, and it's creating sodium chloride, which is very sensitive to light. Okay, so I'm going to coat my other piece of paper, and then we'll expose and process. Okay, we're ready to process. I wanted to show you the sink setup. First tray is a liter of water. You can change that halfway through. It's a five-minute development. The next tray is a gold toning solution. That comes in a two-solution set. You use uh, 50 milliliters of each solution in a liter of water. And finally, the fix, which is 50 grams of sodium thiosulfate in a liter of water and then the wash tray. If you decide you don't want to tone them and you want that brown tone, then you just skip uh, the toner step and you just have a water development in a fix. Uh, it's five minutes in each. Uh, it doesn't pick up that really beautiful gray color until you've been in the wash for about five minutes. And then when it dries, it goes to that kind of uh, sepia brown to that beautiful, beautiful gray color. All right. Uh, when I finish processing, I'll show you the final print. All right. Uh, I process these. This one's just out of the fix, and it's going to go in the wash. And you can see how it still has that brown color after the wash and it dries. It picks up that more neutral gray color. Now, these negatives were regular inversion in light mode. I boosted the shadows a little bit and the blacks a little bit, but I didn't add a curve to them. Okay, they're a straight inversion from light room. And the exposures were six minutes in my UV light unit. Uh, in the sun, probably be a half, a third that much. And they're on uh, my favorite uh, Bristol Cancel uh, XL Recycle. Uh, it's acid free. It's not 100% rye, but it's acid free. Okay, that's salt print. Well, I hope you weren't all too bored with that. I think wow. is too much freaking work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I really enjoyed your images, Tony. I, I yeah, admire that you cool. wanted to put that effort out, but they were really cool. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, as I said at the beginning, you know, I, from my early times, I've been into working stuff in dark rooms and you know, physical stuff, getting fingers wet and things like that. So, I, you know why so many people move to digital? Yeah, because mm. they don't. <laughs> 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 sure, I, a dog, uh, yeah. Tony, your, your pictures uh, that you did in these processes were very nice. I was especially impressed with the photo photograph of the mission. Which was all yeah. a thousand times, and the graveyard with the gate. Uh, yeah. Those two in particular, uh, there was a mood and a character about them that I think is very strong. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. There was something that it was more local. I think maybe it was the gate. Um, it had the infrared, the the um, 
trees were all light colored. Yeah, that was probably the gate. Where was that at again? Los Alamos. Yeah. Los Alamos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was really cool. I like that. The back street. The back street. <laughs> and I liked your I liked your coffin house too. I thought that was pretty interesting. And the first one you showed us, where you had the food in the front and the stove stuff in the back, I thought that was an interesting composition. Yeah. I think they they were all good choices for that process. But I'm I'm like uh, Ed. Uh, we've all seen a lot of that La Prisma mission, but you know that particular print. I guess it just matched the age of the the. And the character of the, the mission itself, it just, it was. Uh, I think you're right. Nice. I mean, it's like uh, subjects like Bodhi, for instance, because of the age of the place and, and you know, the mission and uh, even uh, the, the Preston Castle one, you know, the kitchen, you know, because mm -hmm. that's, that was built in 18 something, you know. So it all matches. In, but uh, yeah, I don't expect any of you to be interested in trying to make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin used to do this in, at here, and uh, yeah. I didn't realize it, it was so much work because I didn't watch what he did. I just saw the end result. <laughs> and uh, as you probably gathered, because I put it at the end there, that was David Passage made those videos. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, would you say this process is easier than the traditional uh, developing in a dark room, or? Not really. You know, it's a lot less, probably less chemistry involved, particularly in the blueprints. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just the two chemicals. You don't need a dark room, really. You know, you just want to do it in, you know, ordinary light bulbs or something like that. Mm -hmm. and expose it out in the sun. So that's really quite easy to do. Yeah, Kevin used to just do it outside in the sun. Well, that's what I do because I don't have a I don't have a fancy box like that. Mm -hmm. But I've been uh, considering building one because nowadays you can get um, you can get strips of uh, um, LEDs in that that are um, ultraviolet UV LEDs. Yeah. So basically, you build a box and you put strips of these UVs in, um, and then you've got yourself a light box. So. I didn't quite get how you got the uh, print made. After you have the negative in your computer, and you you print it out on a piece of paper, and then you put it into this light box or something. I, I kind of missed the step of that. I, I was confused. Yeah, I mean, you take your whatever print you want to make in in your on your computer, and you flip it because you want it back to front, and then you make there it black. And then you can do any adjustments to it. Then you print it. But you, what we print on is uh, stuff called Pictorico, and it's like a clear film. Okay. Sit through the inkjet printer, and then when it's dry, that's what you contact onto your onto your paper. That paper that you put all that stuff all over. Yeah, it's all okay. that stuff smeared all over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't understand it. I know there's something I've missed here. <laughs> So we'll put a little spaghetti sauce on the paper and then just. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> but, you know, with conventional photography, I mean, the, the uh, salt printing, you you have to fix it. Uh, whereas with the blueprints, you don't have to fix it. Because <laughs> once you wash out any un, unexposed stuff, the green stuff, which will be the uh, highlights. Sorry, the, yes, the highlights. Um there's nothing left on the paper to to react. Mm -hmm. I was confused because when he was when he squeegeed that one piece of paper, it looked like he dipped it back in the the tray that the peroxide mix was in to squeegee it. No, he put a piece of pet perspex on top of that. Tray. Oh, okay. I yeah. I thought, how? Why is he putting it back in the peroxide to squeegee it? <laughs> on top of the tray. On top of the tray. Okay. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, that's, that's his own dark room in his own home. That's a pretty oh, nice yeah. dark room. It's not the real thing. The, the yeah, I might even try it if I had that kind of equipment. <laughs> but, uh, conventional, you know, we we use an enlarger and all that sort of thing. Um, it's it's poss probably more work. You need developer. You need to stop it. You need to fix it. Wash it. Um, and then and dry it, but uh, 
but yeah, so. I, I prefer just taking an ink cartridge, taking the old one out of the printer and putting the new one in. <laughs> yeah, but those ink cartridges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's tough. You know, someday when we get back together physically, it'd probably be interesting to see your prints in person because of the textures and the, the subtleties that we can't see over the, the screen. Yeah, I don't think this, um, you see the... Um, we can see. It's it's visible. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not Your virtual well. background is completely blacking <laughs> it out. That's right. That's right. Um, Auto sensor is on. Yeah. Let me see. Change virtual background to none, and you can see the mess in my, my room. You see. And, uh, <laughs> we'll forgive it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's. I can't see it. You can't see it? No, you can't see you now. Yeah. We can't even see you. <laughs> your virtual background is on. There you are. Oh, oh hang on. I didn't apply. It. <laughs> there. Oh, there we go. There yeah. we go. So when will you find out about that contest? I thought that was a really good photo to enter. Well, it's not, not really a competition. It's just every, a photo. Uh, every year that... Um, um, Sorry. We'll we'll go for the Milky Way instead. Um, every year, <laughs> um, every year they run a cyanotype. There's a World Cyanotype Day where people from all over the world. Wait a minute. Um, got closer. People from all over the world will you can submit one, uh, one cyanotype or photocopy of it or whatever. Um, yeah. They also have a, a section because. Cyanotypes can be made on material on cloth, so you can coat a piece of cloth with that and do the same thing. And then when you develop it, you get a blue image on cloth. But they had a thing this year where uh, people could send in um, it had to be a certain size, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're ones on cloth. They could be put in some kind of actual physical exhibition somewhere. So. Um, and so they come up with a, a theme each year. You yeah, have to... they come up with a theme. This year it was interconnected, and which yeah. is why I did the train with the amber. It's an excellent choice. <laughs> yeah. Because when you think of it, what inter interconnected? I mean, you know, something that's good. A lot of people yep. put stuff up that I didn't see how it met the criteria. Yeah, that would be a tough. Yeah, a tough one to come up with. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, but anyway, um, and so I submitted it and um, it was accepted and it's on their website now, which I can, you know, I guess we can post that online if anyone wants to see it. You, yeah. sent, them a, you sent them a digital? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, I scanned it. Uh -huh. I scanned it on my scanner. Um, most of those that I've shown today, I just took with the iPhone. Once I've made them, I put them on the table out in the kitchen and went click. Um, so they're not the best, whereas that one there of the train was actually scanned on the scanner. It just about fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you get interested in this? I mean, originally it was, uh, as I say, I, when I, I went to, when I first came over here, um, I enrolled in Hancock College. Uh, to do some photography, not to get credits or anything like that. It's just that I've always liked to be involved in a club like we are here because it gives you incentive to do things, to take photos, all that kind of thing. Well, as you know, you probably know they run different classes like, uh, you know, standard black and white learning, black and white film, digital, and all that. And they had this class, materials and processes. So, um, you know, I went into that, and we covered some of these, like cyanotype, salt, um, uh, Van Dyke brown, which is a brown color print. Um, other interesting things are, are like um, uh, gum bichromate is is, uh, and you can do colored gum bichromates. That's a that's a a process that um, Steichen used. Yeah, um, and that. Uh, um, uh, 
Pond at Midnight or Pond by Moonlo Moonlight. Uh, that was a by chromate, gum by yes. chromate print. And he, yeah. you can actually manipulate that because yes. when, it's, when it's still wet, you know. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. with bum, gum by chromate, you, you, what you need is a three color negative. So in Photoshop, you would separate the channels. And for instance, the, you know, the red channel, you would make a negative of that and that would be a cyan. You know, and your blue channel will be your yellow. So you'd have three different negatives mm -hmm. and you need registration marks on there because you want to line them up. And what it is, uh, gum by chroma is basically watercolor mixed with gum Arabic and some potassium by which is highly poisonous mixed in it. But that's what gives it its light sensitivity or, or shall we say uh, ultraviolet sensitivity and so you coat the paper with whatever color you're using and let it dry then you put the negative on and expose it and then you wash it in water like you say you can manipulate it with a brush and that kind of thing uh, but what happens is when it's exposed to ultraviolet light the bichromate in the gum hardens the gum in those areas but the areas that don't get the light are not hardened so they wash off you know and so you end up with that color and then you dry that piece of paper and you put the next coating of color on and the next coat uh, um negative and you do that for three and um i can it, it's basically like uh doing a uh, a print run on a on a uh yes it's print. like a like a four color process. Right. I did I did this one in Hancock College. This is this is a three color gum. Hmm. And uh um as you can see it's it's I like it. <laughs> it's different. Yeah. yeah. When, when you consider that it's not it's not a color image as such. Mm -hmm. You, had, uh, you applied the colors one at a time. Yes, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. You apply the colors cool. one at a time, you register them, and uh, and that's it. I mean, it's a lengthy process. Because I was doing this in the class at the college, um, it probably took three weeks because you do one color and then it, it has to dry. So you have to let it dry before you can go in next week and do the next color. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's i guess that's how they did the first color prints weren't more or less i mean the early days of color photography they were using um they were doing a similar thing but they were using color filters mm -hmm. so they would say you have a black and white film and you put a, a red filter on and you put a you know yellow filter on and you put a blue filter on and because the tones are different you then um when you print it you just color those you know to, for the, to the appropriate color and you get the very earliest color prints fascinating <laughs> i thought i thought the i thought the autochrome were the first color prints was well that is virtually the autochrome isn't it well they do it with um uh with a, uh, ground potato <laughs> yeah that's starch yeah right right that's starch well it's like there's another one i'd like to explore is the um albumin imprints. yeah Al it, it, it's just basically egg white egg whites, yeah. whipped up but you put the silver nitrate in it or you put the silver solution in it and it's dried on the paper and then um, and if it I'll, works it will you can always scramble it if it doesn't work. It's great running out of camera time. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you got Tony, Tony, let me ask you uh, let me ask you one question. Uh, because uh, I really understand that uh, Great Britain it's one of the uh, main country in the world of photography, not only about uh, technique. Uh, I remember, like an example, I remember one time I went in London, I was surprised about the number of uh, uh, shops that sell uh, uh, photography, that sell 
pictures how many fair there are every year about photography. So I, I really understand that in Great Britain, the art of photography, it's a very huge business. Do you know why? Um, I mean, not, not really. I mean, I, I can, a lot of the pioneers, I mean, the original pioneers were basically French, you know, like Jacques Daguerre. For the <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then you start coming on to some of the later or the slightly later processes, like the salt print, you know, um, Fox Talbot. Uh, a lot of these people were British, and um, I, I can make assume that's that's why it's it's so big there. Now we have, uh, um, and if ever any of you are over there, you need to try and go to uh, Fox Talbot's home, which is. Um, uh, it called? I always forget that. Um, it's run by the. the um, it's run by the first, uh, and, and it's a former abbey. And um, for God's sake, I can't think of the name of it. Um, anyway, uh, it's well worth a visit, and there's also an exhibition there. Um, the last time I went, they had an exhibition of prints from the uh, ill-fated uh, Arctic expeditions, you know, where the ship got crushed. And in, the, in the ice? In the ice, yeah. What was it called again? I'm, uh, oh, God, what? Um, hang on, let me... Uh, I'm having a brain hemorrhage here. <laughs> <laughs> um having a brain hemorrhage let me look this up um, oh, where are you okay. i keep wanting to say buckland abbey but it's not buckland abbey um it's where the god name is it <laughs> Thank you. It's here somewhere. <laughs> uh, How many terabytes do you have to look through for that? Yeah. Where is it in in uh, London or where is it? Is that a Laycock Abbey? Laycock Abbey. Laycock oh. Abbey is in Dorset. So it's not in London. It's not in London. It's in Dorset? Yeah, it's in Dorset. But it's not that far out of London. Um, and tell me that again. What was it called? Laycock Abbey. L-A-C-O-C-K. Laycock Abbey. Okay. It's a fascinating place. Um, you can see the window that is... Uh, first print he actually made he took through the window looking out into the you know into the grounds it's a pretty bad print it's still there the first print yeah the first print and it still survives i think it's in the um museum you know anyway you're running me out of knowledge anybody else <laughs> 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 Didn't want to show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> I Thank keep wanting Tony. to say Buckland Abbey, but Buckland Abbey was where Sir Francis, Sir Francis Drake grew up. It's his home. You know, the guy who defeated the Spanish Armada? In right. Britain. Yeah. So, but show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, moving on. Okay. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Sorry for boring you. Oh, no, not at all. Yeah. Oh, it was no, beautiful. It was interesting. It was very interesting. I like the salt print. Those were cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I prefer them to the uh, blue. I mean, the blue is nice, but uh, I like the brown color. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like the salt prints. Those were cool. Yeah. Just a lot more work, though, huh? A little more work. Some work. <laughs> yeah. 
I go, well, if I can start getting out again, if I can get my leg to work, taking some more film and then I can do some traditional darkroom, you know. Anybody have a show and tell? There's been talk about it. Didn't bring anything. I have, I found my mindful, a, a few photos from the field trip. Did you want to show yours, Penny? I, I, I can try and do share. Go I ahead. Done it before, so. You want me to do mine first or do you want to go first? I'll go ahead. I'm going to try. Okay. I just hit, I just hit the share button. Uh-huh. And you wait a week and the change is over. <laughs> And, um, there you go. This is um, one that I took. Oh. Where's B? You need another seal. Yeah. <laughs> That's Obsessive pretty cool. Compulsive disorder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, downtown somewhere. Um, That's cool. Yeah, it was close to the mission. Wow, good seeing. Yeah. It was off, off to the side quite a bit, but I like it. One. I like the one in the middle with the envelope sticking out. That really yeah. yeah. I like that. Oh thank you. Let's see now I, how do I go from here? Sounds like they started where do I go from here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll stop sharing right now. Can somebody else share? I don't know if I want to share after that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me show you what I got. It's not, I didn't get that It'll much, but uh, let's see. How do I share screen? Share screen. There you go. Okay, so I got, oh, I was into the, hmm. the shadows and uh, I liked the shadow on the wall. Which mission is this? This is a mission uh, in San Luis Obispo, downtown San Luis Obispo. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So that's just a panel this of the shadow. dog is barking. Please mute your mic. Turn off your dog. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry, oh, then, yeah, another shadow going with the shadow theme. I like the bend in the shadow. Mm -hmm. uh, I was stood there for a while waiting for somebody to walk down those stairs, and nobody did. So I got tired of waiting and I just went on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, should have had some, you should have had somebody walk. I sh well, I could have. Uh, this is just one of the roof lines. That was my favorite one. Cool. Oh. oh. It, depends on, the, it wow. depends on the angle you're looking at it. It looked like it was a cutout. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's no. It was one of the roof lines downtown. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, I just yeah. uh, zoomed in on it, and I liked the light yeah. looking through there. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And. Oh, these kids, this was, uh, oh my God. Uh, I, I loved the, they were so into what they were doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there's some strange guy I met down there. <laughs> Very strange. <laughs> I, I, I would run the other way. <laughs> that was just a, a poster in a window. But the light was kind of shining in her eyes, so I was trying to get it to look like a real catch light, but mm. <laughs> it didn't really work. Uh, just downtown. Mm -hmm. More of that. Where, where, uh, you're, you're up, you're elevated in that one. Yeah, there's some stairs. I mean, it's some of the, the newer shops where you kind of go upstairs and, and uh -huh. they're on a different level and you can look down. Uh, where the bookshop is. Yeah, yeah. But could, you, could you get outside, like a balcony, or you had to shoot it through a window? No, no, this is out in the open area. This is outside. Okay. Those those one stairs where you saw, let's see, up here. Uh huh. I think I think I was just standing up there looking down again. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Then, um, just, uh, I couldn't understand why these were laying on the ground, but I saw this in more than one location. Trump supporters. <laughs> <laughs> Throw them on the ground. I don't know. And this was just a sentimental. Yeah. Uh, my place. Yeah. yeah. That, oh. that was the place we used to all go to. And um, I miss being able to go there. Uh. Like an orange on the mm. ground. <laughs> nice mold. Yeah. I liked this <laughs> because this tree was painted on the wall and there was a shadow painted on the wall of a plant. Wow. But this greenery is a real plant. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of wow. uh, the shadows wow. didn't match right. Oh, cool. So I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> They're messing with my head, man. I know. <laughs> That's the intention. And uh, Ron pointed this out to me, these mannequin pieces. And... And got a leg to stand on. Yep. <laughs> and just, that's it. Very good. Yeah, that's good. It was a fun, fun day. Thank you, Penny. We had a, a nice uh, guided... Um, uh, what would you call it? Meditation period before we uh, went our separate ways, and it was uh, it was fun. Yeah. Socially distanced. Yeah. So now, how do I uh, just, just go how do how do I go up to the top? Go up to the top, and it'll say stop sharing. If you move, move your cap, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. You got more penny? Yeah, I, I'm going to try again. I should go to photos. Albums, that's it. I missed that last time. Field trip. Huh, okay. There it is. Oh, wow, that's scary. There it is. <laughs> Run! <laughs> I think it was the Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming right through the door. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but you yeah. know, the, every time you take a picture of a Yeti, they're blurry. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something about that. I think Bigfoot is blurry. That's the problem. It's not the photographer. <laughs> it's, it's That's the right. Because that means there's a large, out of focus monster roaming the countryside. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I just liked all the different uh, refractions of the reflection here. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Okay, let's see if we can. All right, I want to go to a different one. Good luck. Oh, no, I don't want to <laughs> do them one at a time. Something. Are we having fun yet? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't move a lot, does he? He's a he just refracts. There's another one. And this was here. You haven't changed. I'm not going to move those. That's uh, I'm going to. What? It's you still the it? same. It's still the same photo. Oh. Okay. Webex. You know, we're share albums, oh boy. field trips. There you go. You see, there. Yeah, you see that one. Okay, oh, that's another cool shot. Yeah, uh, we got some cool stuff that day. Yes, so this did. Is, uh, an old uh, rusted light fixture above me, and the uh, bulb had a finish on it that picked up the reflection of everything so you oh. can see see me in the in the photo and ed standing next to me too mm -hmm. oh, cool that's very cool i thought you were shooting <laughs> i thought you were okay. shooting through like a glass window down at somebody so that's really cool okay and then we're gonna do um um a few here from ed 
Yeah, this clearly is not from the uh, San Luis Obispo town. Uh, Penny said, do you have something for show and tell? I said, oh, I might look. I forgot that it was supposed to be from <laughs> the mindless photography. So anyway, this is this is uh, just outside of Truxton, Arizona. It's old Route 66. Um, I like the opportunity and I like the result. The sky is just really adds a lot of balance to the photograph and I, I like it a lot. A lot of this stuff is uh, a lot of personal meaning to me because of my trips with my father, but that's yeah. that's just outside of Truxton. We stopped there and there's an old Truxton station. It's a garage now. It used to be a gas station and I think maybe something else, but uh, and we talked to the owner for probably a half hour or so. <clears throat> yeah, that's over there on the left in the center. And uh, he was an interesting fellow to, to meet and talk to. Want another one? Sure. That's really a cool photo. Are you standing yeah. in the road, Ed, or is that from the? Yes, ma'am. I was in the in the road. I was gonna say. Not a lot that's... of traffic there. You know. Glad there, there wasn't too much traffic. That road. Well, you can get an idea how much traffic there was there. The town of Seligman itself is four lanes, and they could probably get by with a lane and a half right now. Uh, it's just it's, <laughs> when, when the big road went through, all that stuff just you know closed down. My pop, I don't know if he coined the phrase, but he referred to it as the highway of broken dreams and. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's what happened. This is also Route 66. This is closer to Barstow, probably, uh, I would guess, maybe not more than 10 miles east of Barstow, I'm guessing. Um, but I, I liked it with the uh, defining uh, emblem on the road and then the trains going alongside. Cool. Cool. And then I have one more that's really boring. But it gets a star because it has the <laughs> National Geographic approved red clothing. And uh, I just like the colors against the blue sky and then the uh, two uh, large trunks from the tree or whatever yeah. it was. It was going. This is um, in Yosemite. Uh, what point was that that we were headed to, Penny? Do you remember the name of the point? Glacier Point? Yeah, it's not Glacier Point. It's one of the hikes before you get to Glacier Point, though. Um, and I don't remember the name of it. But uh, anyway, I just. I like the color and the op compositional opportunity, but it's not particularly exciting. But oh, I know. Oh, I, I like. That's it's all about the color. It, yeah, yeah, it, it looks like palm trees, and you're in Hawaii. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. I would have I, never guessed yeah, yeah. Yosemite. <laughs> I, bet that, I bet that guy's from Fresno. Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> But San Luis Obispo, when we were walking around, was eerily quiet. I mean, there was there wasn't really a lot of people walking around. We were a little bit early. They were still we setting were up their sidewalk yeah. tables and everything, but um, there wasn't a lot of opportunity for shooting people. Or it did stay pretty quiet. I was there maybe one or two years ago now for the photo walk. That I don't know if they still do that or not, but uh, Calby had this thing as photo walk, and uh, I went up there to do that. And it seemed like every step of the way, you had to sign in with a new password and sign up and log into something else. I won't bother with it again. But they just uh, did it again. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this week it was San Luis done. Bispo and I got a few photos there that I liked. Oh, that's right. On our trip last weekend, but uh, that year or two ago that we did it as a photo walk, I got. Um, I photographed a chair that I thought was kind of cool and uh, a couple other things. There was some gal bubblegum bubble gum alley blowing uh, bubbles and exploding in her face and I photographed her. But uh, And I would have shown those, but I forgot that that's what it's supposed to be about. So you got what you got and that's the breaks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was, uh, no. it was surprising to see how many places looked like they were closing. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it was for good. It was real, yeah. It was yeah. very. It, it was a different experience than I've had, and I've walked around and did photo shoots in San Luis Obispo with the meetup group before, and you know, I think that our club has done it before, and um, this was such a different feeling for me than I've ever had here before. It was very different. Eerie. Yeah, it was. So um, beyond you. So I'll show you some things. They're, they're not from the meetup because I wasn't there. Um, I forgot, actually, I forgot about the field trip. So um, I'm going to show you some. Uh, if I could walk. I'm sorry? 
I said I might have gone if I could walk. <laughs> I'm going to show you some uh, photos from Norway a couple of years ago. Um, oops. There we go. Did I get it? There we go. Um, can get rid of some of this stuff here. Um, in Norway, they have a, a thing called stave churches. They're very old, and um, they uh, there at one time there was about two thousand stave churches, and um, uh, now there's only um, there's only I think uh, twenty eight uh, that still survive. This is just an example of one. This is in a town called Vogo, and uh, uh, so I was I think this was seventeen when I was there. Um, so. The the rest of them, the, uh, I was uh, photographing a model, a couple models, and uh, so I'll show you some of those. Uh, this first one is a is a lady. She's about 24, 25. Her name is uh, Mishka. So it's a, dirty old man. Say what? You dirty old man. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she's she's British, and she's uh, about. Looked like I think she was about five foot tall, five foot one. Had this really curly, curly black hair. She's a mixed race, and had this really gorgeous skin. Uh, just this really, really beautiful uh, brown toned skin. Um, so that's one. Here's a here's a second one of her. Um, and. Here comes, uh, this is a, a third one. Obviously, these are all Mishka. There's a couple others um, from uh, a, a woman named Morgwin, if you can believe that name. I think it's her. her, uh, her. So, so tell me, Jim, uh -huh. you go to Norway and just hit on women or? Well, that's. These all nice shoots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I met I met them in a coffee shop. <laughs> and said, yeah. "Will you take your clothes off?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you have a camera, you'd be surprised how well that works. <laughs> Here, here's another. You, you can see her uh, really curly hair. Um, Is this all window, she has right? a great face. Yeah, she's she's a beautiful, just a beautiful, uh, a beautiful woman. Um, it's just window light, is it? It's uh, yeah. All of this is natural light. There's no studio. Right. This. Yeah. And this was at the coffee shop, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's standing around watching. I need to go to that coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> Give the address, please. Yeah, yeah. If you meet them in Amsterdam, you could have some of that wacky backy too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Go to the bulldog. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, well, I think I've got another couple. Uh, and this is uh, this one on the right is Morgwen. She was all tattooed, and um, um, this is this is. Uh, Amishka, and uh, you know you can see that they're in really bright light. So I was experimenting with that. I think that's the last one. Yeah, that's the last one. There you go. And that reminds me of Beatles song, Norwegian Wood. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fine. She once had a girl. What did I say? She once had me. <laughs> <laughs> During the field or our field trip, I was using Ed's uh, infrared camera, and I have a few images from that if you want to see them. Sure. Yeah, yeah of course. She needs to go. Wait a minute. What's all this other stuff? Did you forget to take the lens off? No. <laughs> I'm in the cap. 
why? Oh, that's my uh, first. There, there it is. This is a. Uh, there it is, yeah. Wow. He's just down there by the uh, mission. They took this on, on, on the last field trip? Yeah. Very good. Oh, that's cool. I like that. And this is the creek. That gets a wow. different view. Wow. Yeah. And then that's downtown. I liked um, what I really I didn't notice the people. They just ran in front of me. But uh, I was looking at the oops, the difference in the old style of buildings with all this construction they have, like little boxes all over the place. Yeah. Hmm. And then looking down. Mm -hmm. Hey, that scene looks familiar. Yeah. At the mission, Elaine, Gems. Ah. Uh, nice and a rooftop. Mm -hmm. Infrared's wonderful. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah that cool. looks nice. Yeah, wow. got the cactus. I have to play with that. Yeah, looking at the reflections. That's but, it. What, what's it reflecting off of water? Uh, it's a actually table? a copper tabletop. Copper tabletop, okay. Stop sharing. Stop sharing. Wow. Cool. Yeah, that's it. Wow. So. Who's next? Oh. I think you have your answer there. No, nope, I <laughs> fell asleep. I have a couple, but it's not from um, the field trip. Does it matter? You guys want to see it? Okay, yeah. I'll show you a few of them. Yeah. So, where's my. So I went in April, I think it was. Um, I went to San Luis Obispo. I went to a few places. I went to Arroyo Grande really early in the morning. And so I took some pictures. Uh, this is the mission that I took. Oh, wow. Um, this is Bubblegum Alley. Mm -hmm. um, and then these are, I have a few. Let me get some past some of these. Uh, him I really liked. <laughs> I haven't done anything with these really, so um, but these were a few of them that I took. Is this in Grande? A uh, yes, I went really early in the morning to see the chickens. Where where do you see the chickens? Oh, in Arroyo Grande, in the where the parking lot is by the bridge. Do you know where the bridge is? No, old no. town, old town of yeah. Grande. There's a no. hang. There's a bridge you can walk across. Yeah, let me um, see if right this off the main bridge. Street. Do you know where this bridge is? No, I, I don't know Arroyo Grande, but oh, that's a historic footbridge. Yeah. Okay, that that's good. I can ask directions if I want to go. Yeah, it's over. Right. It's um, probably north southeast of traffic. Okay. Um, and there's a. You can go down there. It'll tell you there's parking. Mm -hmm. You can go back there, and the chickens are or roosters are out early in the morning. So they're free range roosters. Yeah. yeah, they they're all over. They're even in the trees. Wow. Yeah, so it's really <laughs> uh, really something. And there's a, this explains there's a, the name for Roosters Tavern. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, I didn't know a that. Favorite favorite restaurant haunt bar there. I didn't know that. They also go down in field that's down from the bridge. It's off. Uh, west, I guess, of there from where that last picture was. And then, um, I also went. That was in a Royal Grandy. No, yeah. this one's yeah. not. This oh. one is. And I went, um, I don't know, a few weeks back. 
And I probably, I mean, I've gone up there and I've taken photos of the zebras a lot when I see them. And this was the, I've never seen, I didn't know they had that many out there. When and I've gone, it's probably been a few, there must have been 20, 30 of them. And where is it? Well, sometimes they come really close to the road so you can see them. And yeah. it's a big area, so sometimes you can't see them. Yeah. And sometimes they're up in the hill and there's a bunch of cows standing around them, so they're not real photogenic. But every so, so now where, and then where, they're... I'm sorry, go ahead. Every now and then you're lucky and they'll be close enough to the road where you can get a decent picture. Where yeah. Where is this? St. Simeon. Oh, it's where the elephant, okay. not yeah. far from the, where the turnoff to the elephant seals is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Um, they belong to Hearst Castle, I believe. Yes, they do. Yeah. And then uh, I had a few of the, um, I went out to Pell Beach and took a few of them out there. Nice. So, That's nice. And this one, I like this bird. <laughs> <laughs> where was this, Rosie? Uh, this was in San Simeon, I believe. Really? I think I'd have to look to see exactly where this one was, but it was that day that I went and, um, it was kind of the height of the pandemic. It was in March. I mean, April, beginning of April. So when I went, I went early in the morning, there was nobody out on the street. I mean, it was so bare everywhere I went. And I went to Arroyo Grande. I went to um, San Luis Obispo. I, I went off to Madonna Inn. Um, then I went out to San Simeon. So, yeah, there was there wasn't anybody out there. So really nice yeah. uh, in that image. Yeah. Well, normally we see the scrub jays around here. I don't usually we don't usually see the stellar jays. What so that's why. I think it's a stellar J, and I didn't know. That's why I wondered where it was. I'll have to look, but I really liked him. He was yeah, really, he's beautiful coloring. Yeah, yeah, he was really cool. So yeah. anyway, that was mine. Okay, I came up with. You know, just take a moment if if I can show him. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Uh, let's see. Share. Green. Okay, and let me uh, make this big. I went out whale watching for the first time ever, and I went to um, Port San Luis and Captain Mark's boat, and mm -hmm. I got oh. to see a whale breaching. Whoa! So, oh my gosh! So it was so cool. Um, and I got a few photos of this guy. Whoa, you got oh. nice and close to him. Pretty close. Um, I did have like 70 millimeter lens. And uh, I like this one. He looks like he's a fan. And then splash. And we actually saw, well, I saw two whale breaches. And um, while well, I was taking a picture of another whale, um, this one breached it jumped out of the water and splashed down it was like totally out of the water what everybody said that's the show that's the photo i got yeah. <laughs> I, was, it's hard. I was taking a picture of its buddy I was like, oh man i just missed the best picture ever <laughs> and then <laughs> the third whale breach was the same type of thing it was like uh, uh nope not there let's see we were we got to see three whales um and you know they they let us in quite a bit. Mostly we got whale tails, um, and that was a lot of fun. But once you once you see a whale breach and then you've missed a whale breach, ah, oh, that was so sad. But it was a great whale breach. But I was happy to get the whale's tails. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> Very cool. It's Thank so you. exciting to see them. Yeah. We, we were lucky we got to see them when they were coming in close to the pier before they closed the pier. And uh, it's, it's, it's so exhilarating to see them. Yeah, and then finally when the, I'll show you here at the end, uh, when the 
captain was trying to get us to stop. He's going like, okay, I think they just said goodbye to us now. And then we're like, oh, oh wait a minute. No, we can't go yet. And um, so then finally, this is the final scene. He's going, okay, now this is really it. So here, here there's three swimming together. And we got this tail going. And this <laughs> goes down. And then the other two decide, okay, we're going to go down to. And so then we got the the two tails coming together and they're going bye. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was sea land time. <laughs> that was it. So but, oh what a fan what a fantastic trip. I really enjoyed that. Oh that's, that's cool. cool. You Let's didn't take go. the drone with you? You didn't Pardon? take the drone? Did you take your drone? <laughs> you know, um let me stop sharing. I didn't know about taking my drone, whether I could or not. Maybe I would try that on another trip. <laughs> was the water but, rough? Like, did you have to worry about seasickness or? Um, I never get seasick. My husband was a little, little worried. He got a little bit not, I mean, he's not taking pictures, so he thought it was great. Um, but after the first greet, he probably had enough. But he hung in there. <laughs> um, but I took my two of my so-called grandkids who've never been whale watching, and their brother had been out deep sea fishing, so he'd seen whales. And his, their dad kept telling them, "I'm going to take you whale watching," but hadn't. And so um, when I offered to take them, they were just thrilled. They're ten and thirteen, and they had such a great time. And the two people we went with, there were six of us on the boat. The only this boat only holds six. And the other two people, they said they whale watch all the time, and that was the best time. That's it. That's the only time they had seen three breaches. Actually, I don't think they've ever ever seen any breaches. So um, I was really bummed that I missed the best breach where they actually, I guess, it went up and kind of turned or something. Went oh, it looks like you got a really you got a really good shot. Though. Yeah, I yeah. I think you did really well. We well, went like, whale watching in Monterey, and um, we didn't get anything like that. So, yeah, I was really I happy with that away. one. No, I was really there... happy until then there was a better one, and I missed it. <laughs> oh, there's always going to be a better one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't that the truth? <laughs> is everybody aware that Mars is as close to Earth as it's been in 13 years? Wow. It's in the southern horizon. I went outside and checked. There's there's fog. We can't see it tonight. Yeah. But if you have a Next good telephoto, you might be able to get a really good shot of Mars in the next few days. And then the other thing I want to bring to everybody's attention is the blue moon is, blue. Ho is Hallow Halloween. And the blue moon only occurs when it when you have two full moons in the same month. It incurred last in 2018, and it won't occur again until 2022. So uh, there's an opportunity to go out and shoot a blue moon on Halloween night, if anybody's interested in doing that. Yeah, there was a, ah. it's a Halloween, there was three names to it, a Halloween, blue moon something. I can't remember what the a, whole. A super, there was a super blue moon. Super blue about? moon, super, super blue Halloween moon. blue moon, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I, I think it. October's moon is usually called a um, harvest moon. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, that's probably yeah. it. Your video's off, Greg. We can't see you. My camera battery died. Oh. <laughs> you need a power supply for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing oh, that, Greg. Yeah. That was, yeah. That's good to and know. Oh, you remember my picture there. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, I love oh it. that's good. That's great. That's at that Arroyo Grandy. Yeah. Is, is that there, the Arroyo Grandy? That's great. Yeah. 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 Lots of hens. I caught, I, I, I showed this one in competition. Mm hmm. I remember. <laughs> It was, I called it hen party, way too much of the king. I want to go there now. Yeah. All you right. could have a field trip going. Do you want to have a field trip for the holiday? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we could do, yeah. That would be a good, uh, we huh? could go there and then we could go look for zebras. So. We could do, we could do Christmas hens. 
<laughs> yeah, I think Christmas roosters. That'd be a different one. <laughs> I got to show you this one. I didn't show you guys this guy. He gave me the evil eye. Look at this guy. He just gave me the evil eye. Oh. <laughs> Looking okay. at him, he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> he was different colors than the other guys, too. Yeah. Yeah. So they're all different colors there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I really That's like them. Cool. Yeah, they are. They're really cool. 